Hello again, and welcome to Two Beers Pints. We got some big boys here. So we are drinking the Escaton, Escaton, Esca, 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 something. Esca Imperial Stout. Esca Imperial Stout. <laughs> cheers, bud. Can you cheers in 2020 COVID season? Salud. Okay, let me break down what I smell so you can confirm if I'm correct or incorrect. Okay. I smell dark chocolate. Dark, dark chocolate. I uh, smell uh, yeah. some some uh, grainy tones. Um, They're there somewhere. <laughs> I smell like a like a very like back upper end, back of the tongue hop. Bitterness. Uh, bitterness there. And then um, kind of round it out by like just like a like a weird a weird milk steak. It's very creamy. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, milk milk what? A milk steak. Milk no, steak. It, no, just milk. Okay. But I, I wanted to <laughs> wanted to throw something weird in there. Okay. That's what I smell. How's the taste? <sighs> Is it a chore? It's pretty much all of that in your mouth. It's going to be a bit of a chore to finish it. There's this weird bitterness next to it. It's like you're just eating a hop while drinking dark chocolate. It's like, um, it's, it's hot. It's a uh, chocolate covered hops. That's what it is. Like if you, if, if you are expecting uh, chocolate covered strawberries and it was just dark chocolate covered hops, that's what uh, you got. And then and then to wash it down you had a glass of milk. But it was like one percent milk. <laughs> so it was like wasn't even like super creamy. <laughs> but like almost. Like a little like almost creamy. Yeah, it was like it's basically just creamy water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh I don't mind it. I think it's pretty good. I Dude, this? love that for you, bro. Love that for you. Okay, imagine imagine this with a scoop of coffee ice cream and a little like caramel, maybe with some some fresh sea salt on that. Not a sea salt caramel ice cream, some salt on top of the caramel ice cream or gelato, if you will. Gelato. Hear, hear me out. Yeah, I'll hear you. I don't know that you're going to agree with this because it's not for you. But hear me out. You got your coffee ice cream again, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. Maybe you do get a little caramel on, drizzle on top. Okay. I don't know. I don't want to decide that for you. Okay. But what you do do is get a little concoction of cacao nibs mixed with honey, and you toss that on top. I play with it. Okay. And so hear me out. For the record. Coffee, okay. coffee, your cacao nibs. Then maybe we uh, throw in a little bourbon butterscotch. Ooh. Sauce. Yeah, boy. Yeah. With this beer next to it? Yeah, boy. Yeah. That I'm down for. I think it would work. That I'm down for. Uh, so where I worked at in California, they had a chocolate lavender ice cream. Not only was it fucking delicious and the bane of your existence. Um, I mean, it sounds good to me so far. Interesting, because it's just very sweet and floral. I like lavender. Fair enough. Okay. But it depends on the chocolate, right? Like, yeah. I am sensitive to chocolate. Like, I don't like milk chocolate, but if they went like dark, like more of a dark chocolate and lavender, it, it might be It was relatively, so I mean, the, so what we did to make it is, and that's, that was one of my favorite things make about, it. make it, is, make uh, it. one of my favorite things about working at that place was everything was made, like, from scratch, and so, like, yeah. you get chocolate lavender ice cream, it's like, you know, aside from the base, like, the ice cream base, you know, you just got, like, this, like, liquid ice cream, like, creamy sugarness, you know, that you add, and then, I mean, like, we literally took this dark chocolate and melted it in a pan and just dumped it in and then we took lavender and like made lavender tea with it and then dumped that in 
Yeah. And so, yeah, it was like, it was one of my favorite things about working at the place is like, we just made everything. It wasn't like, oh, this is like this fake syrup mixed with that fake that. It was like, no, we just took the ingredients and just threw it together and it fucking was amazing. So I've also made uh, with my dad various cold brew ice creams because, so Mm -hmm. I would make my own cold brew and then I'd have a bunch of leftover coffee grounds Oh, yeah. That we didn't do anything with. Right. So we added, um, uh, what's the cans? Oh, sweetened condensed milk. Yeah. And like to the coffee grounds and made gelato from that, basically. Um, and then we'd throw in various things like, you know, peppermint or uh, bourbon butterscotch. I, I can't remember all the stuff we did with it, but that like cold brew gelato was just... What it, I, it just making ice cream isn't that difficult. No, and it tastes so much better. What I hear you saying is, we need to replicate this chocolate lavender soon. Could do. And I have cacao nibs, and you just throw some honey, and you get the correct proportions, and it's like the perfect topper. I forgot what I was going to say, but now that you said that, I re remembered. I've made us olive oil gelato. One of the best I've ever had. Like ice creams that I've ever had. To me, it's it's like our chocolate conversation. Um, olive oil gelato is very much like vanilla. Did you ever have the olive oil vanilla bean at the shop? No. Oh, man. I mean, it's, it's that basically, right? Where it's like you instead just, of being infused like yours, it's like just a topping more or less. And yeah. Olive oil and ice cream sounds so weird to people. It tastes, Co- like, it tastes like vanilla, but different. I could not have picked a better combination. Anytime I get vanilla bean ice cream, I dump olive oil on my ice cream because it's fucking delicious. It is amazing. Yeah, if you want a good dessert recipe, look up how to make olive oil gelato. Yeah. Uh, chocolate tartufo. Mm. It's just... So good. It's pretty incredible. This would be a good beer to have with that. Yeah. No, this is a good... This is a, like... In all seriousness, this is a good desserty beer. It is very dark chocolatey. It's nice. Honestly, the more I get through this, the more I'm liking it. I think I had uh, expectations up front that weren't met. Um, so, it, it, It's like a displacement for your affogato, if you will. Like, yeah. You know, you want to you want an after dinner drink, but you're you you know you want you want a you want a real drink, <laughs> and you don't want the calories that come with ice cream. <laughs> Not that so beer is calories light, but like beer. ice cream is like, oof. Uh, this, so if you if you didn't know, we're still at dystopia. We haven't left, but it's a new week. Here we are. Um, so, you know, a little throwback to last week's episode. Go check that out if you haven't. Uh, I'm going to pair a whiskey with this. I'm going to go Talisker, a nice, smoky, but clean uh, scotch, not not pour it in this time, but like have it, you know, sitting sitting close by. You know, you're, you're like, man, this beer's getting a little sweet. And, Do a little sip of smoke. And you know, Talisker is nice because, uh, unlike so it's like coffee and cigarettes. Well, yeah, and unlike Lef- like something like a Laphroaig or something like that, like those are almost like too harsh in and crisp, if you were, whereas Talisker has a lot of smoother, uh, maybe not smooth is the right word, but like sweeter undertones that would really pair with this a lot better than something that was like harsh and smoky. Yeah, it's it's a little bit brighter, I would say bright, to the Lefroy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not as uh, buttery as a Lagavulin. Yeah. Lagavulins get re- like too buttery like for beautiful. me. Beautiful. Like, oh, I love it. I love it. Elizabeth oh, loves I it too. I love it. To me, but not with this. To me, I want like a like a little bit more like floral, like florally, caramely, like a little more crisp. Yeah, is probably a good word. Um, even though it's smoky, it's kind of weird. Um, but that would pair well. Like, like if you had a buttery scotch with this, like a Lagavulin, it would it would just be too thick. Yeah. To con like the contrast wouldn't be there. Yeah. So I think a Talisker would pair quite well. Absolutely. So, all in all, you're looking at a imperial stout. Where are you going with this? I've got mine in mind. Uh, to me, 
A minus. Uh, I know, pretty high for an imperial stop for me. Uh, I think I think I think it's up there on. The, okay, the reason why I really like this imperial stout. It's very bitter. It it knows its lane, but then it kind of plays with some flavors. It kind of plays with the chocolate. It kind of plays with the coffee. It kind of plays with the milk a little bit. But it knows it's it knows where it's, where it lives, and it's really well developed in that lane. Um, so this is pretty groundbreaking. Su surprisingly, for you to for you to not pretty hate good. this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, I will say, I have, since the Pines episodes have started, because the goal is to drink every beer in Tacoma, um, which we've actually not done, but like, <laughs> no, I know, I see your face, but like, we drink a lot more beers that we would never have drank. No, absolutely. No, it's, it has forced us, every time we come to a brewery for Pines, you know, we, we look drink. at the board and we go... Well, we've had that and that, and we like those. Let's get weird today. And and usually, you, like, we'll have a beer before, a couple beers after, you know, some combination of that. And uh, so, like, even if we don't do it on pints, we've still drank. Like, we're we're still in that attitude where it's like we're coming here to drink beers that we don't normally have. Totally, absolutely, hundred um, percent. So I definitely have grown as a beer drinker. And I would say, I appreciate this beer. A minus, sticking to it. What do you think? That's fair. Uh, I'm going. I'm going solid B. Um, everything that you said makes sense to me. I think. I think the harsh bitterness is a bit much for me personally. Um, I do like those drier, chocolatey tones that you do. Exactly. So yeah. it's like, personally, if you're going stout, I, I was, and that's that's what caught me off guard. That's why you'll notice my facial expressions upon first sip, where I was like, ooh, this is a stout. Like, what is this? Like, I will eat. And you were like, hey, this is a stout I could drink. I will eat bittersweet chocolate and enjoy it. Exactly. And so um, it caught me off guard. It's not my preference uh, for a stout. But, like, I can recognize everything that you said, and, like, you know, it holds totally true, where it's, like, it knows it's lame, you know, like, it kind of delves out and, like, plays with some other flavors a little bit, but, like, it sticks true to its lane, and so it's, like, I don't love stouts, but this is pretty good. Like, I don't hate this by any means. Like, I do like this, and, like, I definitely think there's a time and a place where I would get this again. So, um... One of the more popular breweries in the Northwest is McMinimins because mm. they own like hotels and various chains and restaurants like a whole uh, thing. across the Northwest. Uh, back when I first started drinking beer, um, we've talked about this on a podcast before. Recently. Uh, they described a stout or what I assumed to be a stout because I don't remember what the beer was as chocolate cake in a glass. And I think a lot of people uh, resonate with that description of Stouts. Yeah. Like I think Guinness, right? It's just like a foamy, kind of chocolatey, like really sweet, thick boy. Yeah. Um, so if you're thinking like, oh, I love stouts, dark chocolate sounds great, but like you like sweet stouts, you're not going to like Not for you. This. Not for you. Well, and, and, and that's the, that's the, uh, like a lot of people pair like this with like coconut, like a coconut stout, like coconut not going to do well. It's going to be too sweet for this. This is a, this is a bitter that's a different beer. There's a differentiation between like a normal stout or an oatmeal stout or a milk stout compared to an imperial stout. You yeah. know? I mean, the imperial stout a lot of times and like I think like maybe that wasn't even on the forefront of my mind going into this where it's like they're typically a little bit more hoppy. Like they they kind of boost everything up. It's kind of like an IPA where it's like, "Oh yeah, like you have an IPA, it's super bitter. You have a double IPA?" You can get some syrup boys where they just like you don't even notice the bitterness because how sweet they are. Yeah. Opposite of this, stouts are typically normally sweeter. sweeter so when they boost up the bitterness, you're like, whoa. Slow down. Uh, <laughs> slow your roll there, big guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, it's uh, they do good. I think I'm I'm partial to milk stouts, but like this is nice. Like I do enjoy this. Again, I, I could see myself. I I, I can't pinpoint. Uh, that was funny. 
uh, I can't pinpoint a specific, you know, situation where I'd get this again, but at the same time, it's like, I would get this again. I, I don't know the mood that I would go for that, with this personally, but like, it is good, and I would get now, it again. I, I, I'm with you. In the right circumstance. To, to me, and I, this is ge- generally with stouts to me because they are so thick. It needs to, like, there needs to be snow on the ground for me. Like, that's the best way to describe it. Like, I need to have my winter coat next to me. There's snow on the ground. I'd instantly pick this up. So, Dystopian, great bar to play, uh, like, game, board games at. Super great. There's there's snow outside. We're playing we're playing some coup. I could I, have some late nights here with this. I would I would seriously pick up a couple of these. Now hear me out. After like one or two in, it's like it kind of like numbs some of the sweetness for someone like you, where you're like, oh yep. yeah, like this is nice. Yeah. Yeah. I I could see I could see you going five or six deep on that. Thing. Super rad place Get that has a very thoughts. diverse. Uh, assortment of beers. Definitely yeah. should check the place out either way. Well, once again, see you next Tuesday on the podcast. What are we drinking next t- the Tuesday after this? Seeing as this is two weeks out from this filming day, obviously we're going to be drinking 